Hello and welcome to the SimScale tutorial on advanced meshing. This is a continuation of our previous tutorial on meshing where we had explained what a mesh is, why it's important to generate a good quality mesh and how you can do that on SimScale. In this tutorial we'll cover how you can check and improve the quality of your mesh and troubleshoot any problems you get due to bad mesh quality. Now the quality of any mesh can be judged by certain mesh quality metrics and you can find them in the meshing log. So if I scroll up, you can see that we write out a variety of mesh quality metrics along with the statistics for each metric. In order to get a high quality mesh and reduce the chances of our simulation diverging from poor quality cells, we need to look at some key metrics. The first metric we need to look at is the different ratios. So that is the tet edge ratio, the volume ratio, as well as the aspect ratio. And we need to ensure that the maximum value for them is at least under 100 and ideally under 50 if possible. The other key metric we need to look at is the max non-orthogonality and ensure that it is at least below 80 and ideally below 75. So in this case, I can see that the max non-orthogonality is too high. And now I'm going to show you how you can identify those poor cells and fix them. To visualize the mesh and identify and isolate any poor quality cells, we can use a mesh quality tool. Now that we're in the tool, we want to look at the cells which have high non-orthogonality. So we can isolate them using this ISO volume filter, and I can change the scalar to non-orthogonality and the map scalar for the legend as well to non-orthogonality. Now to only look at cells which have high non-orthogonality above 75, I will increase the max value of this ISO to the full range, and I will change the minimum value to 75. That way, I'm only looking at the cells which have non-orthogonality above 75. And those are highlighted here. Now I can start to zoom in and identify those cells. So I can straight away see that these cells mostly occur at sharp edges, such as this one, where these two surfaces converge towards a point and lead to poor quality cells at the tip. Next, we look at how we can mitigate this issue and prevent these cells from occurring. The first and best way to solve this issue is to address it in your CAD platform. So in this case, I can add a fillet or chamfer on my edge, thereby preventing these cells from occurring in the first place. Now this will not have a significant impact on the flow in this region or have any bearing on your results, but it'll dramatically improve the mesh quality. The same applies for any tiny slivers, any gaps or any features that can be cleaned in the CAD platform itself. And when that is not possible, there are a few settings that we can adjust within the SimScale mesher to get rid of this problem. So let's go back to our mesh and take a look at these settings. The first thing we can do is refine the problem areas and reduce the cell size on them, thereby improving the mesh quality. So I can create a local element size refinement, select the problem surfaces and reduce the element size on them. Alternatively, I can create a region refinement and choose a shape within which to refine these cells. The second thing I want to look at is my boundary layer mesh. Since the poor cells tend to occur at the surface and not at the far field domain, it's important to adjust the size of the first cell within your boundary layers using the boundary layer settings. The third thing we can do is change the small feature suppression under our advanced settings. So this suppresses any CAD or geometric features that are below this threshold. In our case, we can increase it to prevent the mesher from meshing those tiny slivers so I can increase this tolerance level. Now let's take a look at another mesh where I've done precisely that. So in this mesh, I have increased my small feature suppression tolerance and I've also added a local refinement around those problem surfaces. And now if I look at my meshing log and look at the max non-orthogonality, I can see that it's below 75 and I'm happy with that. This was just a quick overview of some of the advanced mesh settings within SimScale and the workflow you can use to identify and fix any bad cells. Thank you for listening.